cannulation and management of the endovascular AVF. The Wavelink endo-AVF system allows for the creation of an AV fistula via an endovascular or non-surgical approach. Fistulas created like this may be referred to as endovascular, endo-AVF, or percutaneous perc-AVF. Benefits of the Wavelink endo-AVF may include avoiding surgical scarring and arm disfigurement associated with open surgery, expanding the anatomic options available for AVF creation and enabling multiple cannulation options for patients. Indication for use. The Wavelink endo-AVF system is indicated for the creation of an arterial venous fistula using concomitant ulnar artery and ulnar vein or concomitant radial artery and radial vein in patients with the minimum artery and vein diameter of 2.0 millimeters at the fistula creation site who have chronic kidney disease and need hemodialysis. Contraindication, target vessels less than two millimeter in diameter. The Wavelink endo-AVF system is designed for the creation of an AV fistula in the deep ulnar or radial vessel systems of the upper forearm. Neither of these locations are used for surgical creation. Offering these sites increases the number of anatomical locations an AV fistula can be created while leaving future surgical AV fistula creation options open. This video shows an example of cannulating a Wavelink endo-AVF. Well, today I'm going to cannulate an endovascular fistula. You can feel a thrill just over the anastomosis. With an endovascular fistula, there's no uh, surgical scar because of um, the configuration. Flow actually goes up the cephalic vein and flow will go up the basilic vein as well. So there's different areas that you can actually cannulate. And with this fistula here, people have been cannulating the cephalic vein. I'm going to locate the vessel and then cannulate. So with an endovascular fissure, there's really no difference in cannulation than with a reg regular surgical um, fistula. Once the needles are in place, you can start dialysis. Some endovascular fistulas have a split flow and may have needles placed in different vessels. That is demonstrated here. Again, with the tourniquet up, standard cannulation techniques can be used. Here you see the arterial and venous lines are split between the cephalic and median cubital vessels. The arterial line is placed in the vein with the higher blood flow. These patient examples demonstrate potential outcomes for the endo-AVF patients. Individual patient outcomes can and do vary based on the condition of the patient, severity of the disease, extent of surgery, and response to treatment. The illustration on the left shows potential cannulation zones of the outflow veins of the endo-AVF. The images that follow show the development of an endo-AVF from first cannulation through two and a half years post-creation. The arm shows rope ladder cannulation, but minimal scarring and arm disfigurement. The NEAT study was the pivotal clinical study for the Wavelink endo-AVF system. In that study, the endo-AVFs were assessed as mature for cannulation if they had brachial artery flow rate, inflow, of at least 500 mils per minute and a minimum outflow vein diameter of four millimeters. The chart on the left shows that on an average brachial artery blood inflow reached over 700 mils per minute one week post-creation and outflow veins measured on average between five to six millimeters at three months. Most surgical AV fistulas result in a single outflow vein, limiting the potential cannulation of vessels. The Wavelink endo-AVF is created in the deep forearm and a perforating vein carries the outflow up to the superficial system, thus arterializing multiple upper arm veins. This may result in several available vessels for cannulation, 
including the potential for a split flow fistula arm. Ideally, the physician that created the endo-AVF will also create a cannulation guide identifying the cannulation zones, blood flow direction, and vessel depth prior to the patient's first dialysis session. This may be delivered in various forms, the physician may mark directly on the patient with the marker, he or she may take a picture of the patient's arm, or may create a map on a piece of paper to guide the cannulator. Once the cannulation zones have been identified, apply a tourniquet to the patient's arm to help with vessel access. Let's review needle placement. Place the inflow or arterial needle in the highest flow vessel. The needle tip can point retrograde or antegrade, depending on your unit's protocol. The outflow or venous needle tip should point towards the venous return. The needle can be placed in the same vessel as the arterial needle as long as it is more proximal. It can also be placed in the parallel vessel if the diameter is equal to or larger than four millimeters. Note that the outflow needle can be more distal towards the wrist than the inflow needle if it is placed in a different vein than the inflow needle. This is due to the split flow nature of the fistula. In the NEAT study, cannulation zones varied between cephalic, basilic, median cubital, and split flow. The mean available cannulation length was more than 10 centimeters. Appropriate cannulation vessels will vary based on endo-AVF development and patient body habitus. Remember to refer to the cannulation map from the creating physician for guidance on appropriate cannulation zones for each patient. These images show examples of potential vessel cannulation options. Two needles in the upper cephalic, one needle in the upper cephalic and one in the lower cephalic, one needle in the cephalic and one in the median cubital, and one needle in the basilic and one in the median cubital. It is important to note that one patient may have multiple appropriate outflow vessels that can be used for cannulation if directed to do so by the creating physician. Some additional things to consider for a successful endo-AVF cannulation. If you have access to them, refer to the ultrasound images to help plan your target needle sites. Try to manage conditions like hypotension and dehydration prior to needling in order to avoid related complications. Designate an expert cannulator for initial cannulations of the new endo-AVFs. Be gentle not to sidewall or backwall the needle tip. The endo-AVF outflow vessels feel softer than an upper arm surgical AVF when the needle tip enters the vessel. Blood flashback will occur, but it may be less vigorous than with the surgical AVF. Remember to evaluate all possible cannulation sites, including those below the elbow, as the fistula site is very deep in the forearm. The median cephalic and median basilic are commonly used for cannulation. In summary, the endo-AVF offers multiple potential vein segments for cannulation. The Wavelink endo-AVF system provides two additional proximal forearm locations for AV fistula creation. Endo-AVF avoids surgical scarring and minimizes arm disfigurement associated with open surgery. Some commonly asked questions include the following. Should I use a tourniquet when cannulating an endo-AVF? Yes, always use a tourniquet. What needle gauge should I use when cannulating an endo-AVF? Follow your clinic's protocol for needle size progression just as you would for a surgically created AV fistula. No changes are needed for the endo-AVFs. For example, some clinics initiate with a single smaller 17 gauge needle for arterial access, return through the catheter if present, and use a slower pump rate before progressing to higher pump speeds and larger gauge needles as tolerated by the patient, eventually achieving a dual needle cannulation. What length needle should I use? A proper assessment of the fistula arm should guide your choice of needle length. Usually, your clinic's standard needle length will be acceptable. However, a shorter needle may be beneficial for more superficial cannulation zones and certain body habitus. How should I direct the dialysis needles? Venous needle tip should point towards the venous return and the arterial needle tip can point retrograde or integrate depending on your unit protocol. Are there specific techniques for cannulating an endo-AVF? 
For successful needle placement, it is recommended that a cannulation guide be made prior to cannulation. This should provide detail on cannulation zones, blood flow direction, and vessel depth from the skin. Other techniques to consider include, be gentle in order to not sidewall or backwall the needle tip, keep in mind that the needle angle will vary with patient body habitus, and like with surgical AVFs, rope ladder technique is still preferred over the buttonhole technique. Can the dialyzer run at the same speed? Occasionally, the initiation of pump speed, approximately 300 to 350 mils per minute, may be required for multiple sessions until optimal flow rates are achieved. Of note, if two outflow veins develop well, cannulation of these may result in improved dialysis adequacy given the lack of recirculation. What do I do if infiltration occurs? Follow your clinic's protocol for management of the infiltration. Does the pulse augmentation test still work on endo-AVFs? Yes. Keep in mind that endo-AVFs often have multiple outflow vessels, so findings may differ from surgically created single outflow AV fistulas. For further questions, please visit our website at bd.com forward slash wavelength. Contact our medical services and support hotline or email our cannulation inbox at wavelengthcannulation at bd.com. Thank you for taking time to learn about cannulating the wavelength patient.